Hello and welcome to today's lecture. So far in our study of schemes, we have studied sheaves of modules over schemes. And in particular, we have seen that the class of quasi-coherent sheaves stands out in being defined in terms of honest modules over an open cover of our scheme. And in this lecture, we will look at some important examples of and constructions on quasi-coherent sheaves. So let's get started. The first example is that of ideal sheaves. So the idea behind this is that when we define affine subvarieties of affine varieties or affine subschemes of affine schemes, uh, we saw that they were vanishing sets of ideals. More specifically, if Z is spec S for some ring S, uh, if that is an affine subscheme of X, which is spec R, then uh, the ring S is simply the quotient ring of R by some ideal J. In other words, this ideal J is defined by the following exact sequence that relates the uh, global sections of the structure sheaf of X to those of Z. This is simply saying that we have here R and here S. This is the map induced by the inclusion of the closed subscheme or what we view as an inclusion. And then J is just the kernel of uh, this map, which means that it is the quotient ring. So this idea works well for affine uh, schemes, and we have seen hints at possibilities of globalizing this. And this is what we want to do. So we want to define sheaves of ideals. Let's first give the definition. So an ideal sheaf on a scheme X is a sheaf of modules on X together with an injective morphism uh, into the structure sheaf of X. So this means that for each open U in X, J of U is an OXU submodule of OXU, which is exactly the same thing as saying that it is an ideal in OXU. Now, let's see why this is useful. So take a scheme X and a closed subscheme Z and denote the uh, uh, morphism by I, the closed embedding of Z into X. Then first, if M is a quasi-coherent sheaf of modules on Z, then the push forward of M along I is a quasi-coherent sheaf of modules on X. Using this, we will get that the map I star associated to I induces an exact sequence of the following shape. And this is an exact sequence of quasi-coherent sheaves on X. So what this means is that there is a quasi-coherent sheaf denoted J Z over X, such that this sequence with I star here uh, is an exact sequence of quasi-coherent sheaves. So let us start by proving part one. For the proof of one, assume first that X is affine, say X is equal to spec R. Then uh, it follows from the definition of closed subschemes that Z is also affine, is an affine subscheme. Uh, spec of R J. Why is it an affine subscheme? Well, a closed subscheme uh, will be affine on all affine open sets in X, and in particular on X itself. So in this case, if we take a, a quasi-coherent module over this thing, so then in this case, M will be M tilde for some N, a module of over Rj, 
Uh, again, because if it is quasi-coherent, then on all affine open subsets, it's of the form M tilde. In particular, since the whole scheme is affine, it is globally on, of the form M tilde. Then, uh, with this being the case, taking I star of M will exactly be M tilde, but now viewing M as an R module via the quotient projection. So here I take an R mod J module and I view it as an R module via the quotient projection, and this gives me a quasi coherent sheaf of modules over um, X. So, since this is now true in the affine case, if x is not affine, then in general, as always, we glue. Because then applying this reasoning on any uh, subset in an affine uh, cover of x, we get exactly that I star m is quasi-coherent by the definition of quasi-coherence. To prove the second part, let's pause and think what we actually need. So now, by the first part, we know that I star of OZ is quasi-coherent, and OX is also quasi-coherent. So uh, if we manage to prove that this I star is surjective, then the kernel of it will be quasi-coherent. We have seen that kernels of maps between quasi-coherent sheaves are quasi-coherent. So this shows that putting the kernel as this j z over x gives us exactly what we need. So we need to prove that i star from o x to o z pushed forward is surjective. And again, we start with the affine case where Z is um, spec of R mod J. Then in that case, O X is the quasi-coherent sheaf associated to R and I star O Z is the quasi-coherent sheaf associated to R mod J. And the map from R to R mod J is surjective since, of course, the quotient projection is surjective. And we have seen among the properties of quasi-coherent sheaves that uh, such a map is surjective or injective or fits in an exact sequence in a more general uh, setting if and only if the corresponding uh, maps of modules does. And so this shows the statement in the affine case. And in the general case, we again cover X by open sets and proceed uh, locally. So uh, this means that this jz uh, over x serves the role of an ideal in this generalized setting. This is exactly the uh, exact sequence we hope to achieve, uh, inspired by the affine case. Of course, we had to take the push forward of oz to bring it on an equal footing with everything else and work over x. And so, therefore, we call the sheaf J Z mod X the ideal sheaf of Z in X. So, uh, any closed subscheme determines an ideal sheaf, like we just saw, and vice versa, any ideal sheaf determines a closed uh, subscheme. Why is that? Well, Again, in an affine case, so if we have an ideal sheaf 
here. Then uh, we will have uh, j of u i being some ideal j in O x of u i. And so then this gives us the scheme Maybe I call this ji, then we have spec of r mod ji, and then gluing together, we get our closed subscheme. The next construction we'll look at is that of a pullback. So we have defined push forwards, which were rather straightforward to define. Pullbacks actually have better properties, um, but are um, less trivial to define. So given schemes x and y and the morphism from x to y and given a quasi-coherent sheaf on y i want to pull it back to some quasi-coherent sheaf on x this is somehow dual to the push forward construction so how do we do this well let's look at the affine case if x is affine spec r and y is an affine scheme spec s and M is an S module, so that we are considering the case where we have the uh, quasi-coherent sheaf associated to M, then the way to make uh, M into an R module is simply to tensor by R over S. So why does this work? Well, if we have F from X to Y, then in particular, this gives us F star from uh, the uh, structure sheaf of y applied to y globally to o, y, o x of x but this is precisely s to r so we can view r as an s algebra via this f star and therefore it makes sense to tensor m with r over s M being an S module as well. So uh, we define the pullback of this quasi coherent scheme M associated to the module M simply by putting it as the quasi coherent sheaf associated to the tensor product of M with R over S. Now we want to globalize this and do it in the general case but there are technical necessities that you might want to look at just to know that this can be done in practice as always when you compute things you compute things on an affine open cover where you can restrict to the affine case so this idea that you are taking uh, some module over y and tensoring it uh, with x whatever that means is is the prevailing idea. So doing the general case goes in two steps. First, you are given a sheaf over y, you need to make it into a sheaf over x. So you need to uh, associate something to any open u in x. And this should be like uh, map u with f to y, and then take m of f of y. The problem is that this does not work, and this is why I have put this in quotation marks, because this is in general not open. The reason push forwards works worked were that there we had f inverse of u, which is open because f is continuous. I leave it to you to define a natural morphism between this object and this object in the case where x and y are affine and m is m tilde and then once you have defined this you only need to check uh, that the stalks agree so what is the stalk of f star m at p in the affine case well let's go piece by piece so the stalks are um, they respect this tensoring, uh, 
So what we get here is our P tensoring over S at FP with M localized at FP. And a result from um, commutative algebra tells you that this is exactly the localization of our tensor over S M at P. So this gives you the construction that we had before. But like I said, in general, typically you only need the affine construction to uh, check or compute things when you have an actual problem you're working on. So let's look at some examples. Uh, the uh, pullback of the structure sheaf of y is the structure sheaf of x. This is simply because, by definition, this is Ox tensoring over F inverse Oy with Oy. Well, sorry, F inverse of Oy. And tensoring over a ring with the ring itself is the same as not tensoring at all. I leave it to you to define a natural morphism between this object and this object in the case where x and y are affine and m is m tilde. And then once you have defined this, you only need to check uh, that the stocks agree so what is the stock of f star m at p in the affine case? Well, let's go piece by piece. So the stocks are, um, they respect this tensoring. So what we get here is our p tensoring over S at FP with M localized at FP. And a result from um, commutative algebra tells you that this is exactly the localization of our tensor over S M at P. So this gives you the construction that we had before. But like I said, in general, typically you only need the affine construction to uh, check or compute things when you have an actual problem you're working on. So let's look at some examples. Uh, the uh, pullback of the structure sheaf of y is the structure sheaf of x. This is simply because, by definition, this is Ox tensoring over F inverse Oy with Oy. Well, sorry, F inverse of Oy. And tensoring over a ring with the ring itself is the same as not tensoring at all. Second, if i is the inclusion of a closed point into the scheme x, then the pullback of m at p is the only non-trivial section space over the residue field uh, kappa of p. So uh, this is written in a bit strange way. Maybe I should say that i star of m has a unique non-trivial section space i star m of p. And this is called the fiber of M at P. So you view the sheaf M locally at P. And so taking an open cover or assuming that X is a fine, and then that M comes from a module M, then this uh, vector space is exactly M mod P. 
n. And in that case, kappa of p is r mod p. So this is an r mod p module. But since p is closed, r, this means that the ideal p is maximal. So r mod p is a field, and this is a vector space over this field. Uh, next, let's see what happens when we combine pullbacks and push forwards with the special case of an inclusion of a closed subscheme. So if i is the inclusion of a closed subscheme z into x, then if I take a quasi-coherent sheaf n on z, push it forward to x, and pull it back to z, then I get n itself. In the other direction, if I take a quasi-coherent sheaf m on x, pull it back, then push it forward, I get m itself tensored over Ox by the push forward of the structure sheaf of z. This follows from the more general statement that if I start with a quasi-coherent n on z and a quasi-coherent m on x, pushing forward n tensor the pullback of m is isomorphic to pushing forward n tensoring with n. Pause and think why this fact implies the first one, and also try to figure this out in the affine setting. Okay, so we only need to check the affine setting because of the previous argument that we can check things on an affine open cover. In the other direction, if I take a quasi-coherent sheaf m on x, pull it back, then push it forward, I get m itself tensored over Ox by the push forward of the structure sheaf of z. This follows from the more general statement that if I start with a quasi-coherent n on z and a quasi-coherent m on x, pushing forward n tensor the pullback of m is isomorphic to pushing forward n tensoring with n. Pause and think why this fact implies the first one and also try to figure this out in the affine setting. Okay, so we only need to check the affine setting because of the previous argument that we can check things on an affine open cover. So in the affine setting, again, x will be spec r, z will be spec r mod j, n and m will be the quasi-coherent sheaves corresponding to modules n and m. And now if at once I forego the transition between quasi-coherent modules and the actual modules, the theory tells us that we only need to check this for the corresponding modules. So what modules do we have? Well, on the left here, I am taking n, tensoring it over r mod j with the pullback, which is r mod j tensored over r with m. And viewing this as an r module. But tensoring is associative and cancels out, so from commutative algebra, I know that tensoring with r mod j over r mod j cancels out, so I'm tensoring n viewed as an r module with m. And this is exactly what the right hand side is. This shows how these i star and i sub star are related to each other and you're welcome to think about what this means in categorical terms if you wish.